Bonjour. Hola. Konnichiwa. How are you doing, my dream stars? It has been a very, very long time since we had a chance to chat, to chill, to relax. So for these past four years, four years, four long years, I've been taking up a new hobby, a new passion of mine, and I'd like to share this with you. Tonight, I want you to relax, 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 relax with me as we explore some dungeons and dragons triggers. So just relax. first thing you need when you play Dungeons and Dragons is some polyhedral, 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 polyhedral This tin is a collector's tin. And I love, I love, love, love the sound it makes. I got this box from a magazine in a store when I visited my home. And inside, a set of black and red polyhedral dice. They are contained in a soft foam bed, a bed of soft foam. Can you hear it? dice used in D&D, but let's start with a familiar one. Everybody who plays board games knows this dice. It has six faces, square shaped, and this is called a D6, because it has six faces. What I love about these collector dice is that they are black and the numbers are inked in red. And these are two of my favorite, 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 favorite colors. They're usable for any character you can create. Now the D6 is used in many forms of attack, but I never knew 
this dice existed before. This dice is triangular. It has four faces. And the numbers are on the point. This is called a D4. This is also used in many types of attack in D&D. Some melee, some ranged, some magic. Magic, 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 magic. This, I think, is one of my favorite. The size, the shape, it's very appealing to the eye. Above the D4 and the D6, you have the D8, because it has eight faces, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is used mostly in magical attacks. One of the most common D and D triggers is when you roll the dice. Don't worry. All in due time. Above the D8, we have the D10. Five faces on the top and five faces below. The numbers range from one up to nine and zero but you can never roll a zero. That would be ridiculous. Along with the D10, you have this. This is called a percentile dice. It's the same shape as the D10, but the numbers increase in 10. So with your d10 and percentile dice in hand, you can roll them and the numbers will give you a percent out of a hundred. If on one dice you roll an 80 and on the other you roll a 9, that is 89%. Very rarely will your dungeon master inquire you to roll these dice. But the consequences can be extremely diverting. Next, we have the d12. As your character increases in level, so too does the damage in the attacks. Obviously, the higher number of faces your dice has, the more damage you can inflict on your enemies. This last dice is the most popular and common dice you will use. This polyhedral dice is the D20. D20, 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 D20. D20, D20, D20. The D20 is what you roll when you want to hit your opponent. The higher the number, the greater your success. After you roll your d20, 
Then, and only then, can you roll your attack dice. This is also used to make saving throws. If you find yourself in a precarious situation, your DM will ask you to make a saving throw with a particular modifier. But I get ahead of myself. When rolling a dice, it's very common for them to roll off the table, so it would be advisable to get something like this. This. This is my dice mat. The corners are magnetic, so I can Clip them together, like so. And it forms a wonderful little tray, so that when you roll your dice, they'll never fall off the table. This side is black and very, very smooth. other side has a rougher felt feel and is grey with the embossed logo in a shiny silver. This dice tray is reversible, but there are many kinds made of wood, felt, even metal. We all have our preferences, I suppose. I prefer the black inlay. Just the other week, I bought myself a new set of dice. And I have to say that the case is not a collector's item. I love that I can see all my dice on display on my desk, on the gaming table, Wherever you prefer. Now, I bought these because they fit my character incredibly well. And the style really draws the eye. Now, these numbers are painted in a grey sky silver. And they look like the sky, with the white swirling in the azure blue. They are very pretty indeed. playing D&D, a character sheet is extremely vital. It contains all your specifics, all your details, all your character's statistics. This is my character. His name is Raynor Greywind. A has two dots above it to emphasize the A sound, for it's an elvish name, Re, Reynor. 
and Grey Wind. It is a very common human name, for you see Raynor Grey Wind is a half elf. He is a sorcerer with magical powers, but he was raised as a hunter and is not very adept at his craft. His armor class is 13, relatively low, but normal for a sorcerer. But what they lack in defense, they more than may make up for in powerful attacks. Every character has a proficiency. Skills that they are very good at. Raynor, for example, is a proficient acrobat. So any skill checks that he was required to do, he can add a bonus of plus two to any roll with his d20. All his modifiers are listed in the stat blocks on the right. Strength, minus two. So whenever you roll a d20, no matter the number, you must subtract two for Raynor's strength. Maybe your character's strength will be plus four, or plus three, or even plus five. They could be very strong indeed. But your modifiers are too governed by the roll of the dice. His dexterity and constitution, plus three. Strong constitution is essential for a sorcerer to main focus on all his spells and enchantments. Enchantments, 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 enchantments. Intelligence, a moderate plus one. Intelligence governs any checks, whether it's history, or investigation, or general knowledge about religion or the local area. He's not that caught up on general knowledge. Next you have wisdom. You may not be intelligent, but that doesn't mean you can't be wise. Wisdom deals with insight, gauging people's reactions, whether they're telling the truth or possibly lying. Last, you have charisma. Charismatic characters are extremely good at influencing other people and enforcing their will on the world. Very potent if you're a magic caster. You also have languages and certain weapons that you are proficient in. You have your hit points, which basically tells you how much damage you can take before you need to make a death saving throw. You have your lists of attacks, personality traits, and any extra feats and skills. For example, here he has dark vision, which means he can see up to 60 feet in the dark, though be it in shades of gray. The background of your character, where they come from, also defines what they can do and how they can move about society, or even the wilderness. The next sheet is more of a reference for the pages in the player's handbook, where you can verify the rules and conditions of your skills. Just because you can cast magic doesn't mean you can do anything you want. Everything has limitations, including magic. 
You also have an inventory. These days, you can have a digital character sheet. But some people, they prefer old school. Creating a character is some of the most fun you can have. But nothing compares seeing your character grow and evolve. Let me give you some examples on how to play D&D. Imagine, if you will, one day Raynor is strolling down the path through his forest home and he is attacked by three goblins. They make an attack against him, one goblin firing arrows. The arrow misses. The dungeon master has made a roll. He doesn't need to tell you the roll, only the outcome. Now it's Raynor's turn. He wants to fire a ray of frost, a magical beam of pure white light that will freeze anything it touches. So first, as the player, you take your d20 and you make your roll to hit. This roll is a 17. So, the dungeon master will then inform you of the success or failure of your attack. The 17 is a success. The damage dice for Rare Frost is a d8, which I roll. Four. Four points of damage. The Dungeon Master will then describe the outcome of your attack. For example, Raynor thrusts his hands forward, a beam of light shooting forth, impacting the goblin square in the chest freezing frost coating his limbs, but still standing. The attack is a successful hit, yet the damage is not sufficient enough to fell his foe. Another goblin shoots an arrow, misses. The third goblin runs towards him with a sword. He swings his sword and hits Raynor, but just before the sword hits, he has a reaction. A magical shield bursts forth, blocking the blow from the sword. The shield spell is a reaction and adds plus five to his armor class. So what was once 13 becomes 18 until the end of his next turn. A few more arrows are fired, but with his magical shield in place, none of them seem to be able to hit. It is Raynor's turn once again. This time he decides to attack using his two daggers. Perchance there is a goblin standing right next to him. When making melee attacks, most of them require strength. Raynor's strength is minus two, which would not bode well for him. Luckily, some weapons use the dexterity modifier, which the daggers most certainly do. Fifteen plus three is eighteen. A hit, a palpable hit. With two daggers in hand, you can roll again to attack with the second dagger. Fourteen plus three, seventeen. Another dangerous wound. 
Now dagger, the damage uses a d4. Both the attacks hit, so for the first damage, it is a 3, plus your dex, 6 damage. The first dagger pierces the goblin's shoulder. The second attack, another d4. A 2. As written in the player's handbook, you do not add your modifier to the second attack. So 6 plus a 2 is an 8. For the second attack, Raynor slashes the goblin's neck and it topples lifeless to the ground. One goblin has fallen. That is the process of every action in Dungeons and Dragons. You, the player, state how you would like to proceed. The dungeon master tells you how it is possible and the roles required to succeed. Some are easy with very low difficulty. Others are very challenging indeed. With your d20 and enough modifiers, you can reach over 30. But that is at much higher levels. Dice, polyhedral dice, are dangerously, addictively collectible. Especially when you find some that reflect your personality or your character's abilities. There are many tutorials on YouTube teaching them how to play Dungeons and Dragons. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to help. But I strongly recommend you watch a few groups, for there are plenty. There is Critical Role, Natural Six, High Rollers, Ox Venture, The Black Dice Society, Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Every campaign is different. Some are whimsical, some are terrifying. But it is always fun and it is always confronting. Thank you for letting me talk to you about my new hobby. Have a very good night. Relax. Enjoy. My gentle dream star.